So looking at this one, guys, this one, uh, usually most students are like, all right, I understand this. I understand taking a quadratic, factoring it, setting it equal to 0, applying the 0 product property solving, and getting my two zeros, and then possibly rewriting it back in factor form. But this one kind of makes no sense to me, or at least I'm still struggling with this, because how am I going to do something that's to the fourth? Well, we get, realize, guys, the coefficients here are all the same, right? So we can trust, again, if we're asking the same question, find the zeros, that I'm going to get the exact same factors, at least as far as numbers go. I'm not going to have like 5 and 7 here. Right? I still need to multiply to give me negative 3. And I still need the coefficients to add to give me negative 2. Right? So it's not like I'm changing these numbers. I don't need like 7 and 4 or something. Those are going to be the same. The issue is this is squared and this is to the first power. This is to the fourth. This is to the second. So when I'm multiplying my x and my x, I need to get to x to the fourth. And when I'm combining my middle terms, I need to have x squared as the power. So what power should I be raising these factors to to obtain that? 2. And that's literally, guys, all you had to do. And again, if you're like confused on it, just check your work. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times 1 is x squared. Negative 3x times x squared is negative 3x x squared. Negative 3x squared plus 1x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Okay. Now, again, the same respect, we have to go back and solve. Now, here I didn't show using the zero product property. So here, be careful. The zeros are not 3 and negative 1 like they were over here. right? And again, maybe I should even 0 equals x minus 3 and 0 equals x plus 1. Show you we're using the zero product property to get those. Because here, if I use the zero product property again, x squared equals x squared minus 3 and 0 equals x squared plus 1. Well, now when I solve, I'm actually going to rewrite these. x squared equals 3. x squared equals negative 1. Now when I solve, I have to introduce the square root. So that means I have to use plus or minus, right? Please remember, guys, this is really, really important for this chapter. When you are introducing the square root, you have to include that plus or minus. So now my x equals, I can't take the square root of 3, so it's just going to be plus or minus the square root of 3. Here, x equals, we're taking the square root of negative 1, which we represent as our imaginary unit, plus or minus i. So four zeros. So therefore, we're going to need to have like four factors, right? And you could write them back like as, you could write them all set equal to x individually, and then all write as factors. But hopefully you guys can kind of pick up on what I'm doing. I'm just going to write these individually as factors. And this is the linear factorization. This is the linear factorization, not this. This is factored. That is correct. That's factored. But, a lot of but what we want to talk about is the linear factorization. Because the linear factorization tells you all the zeros in their factored form. Does this tell you what all the zeros are? Nope, actually it doesn't tell you any of the zeros. Over here, it actually worked out. Hey, it tells us the zeros. That's nice. But when you don't have your variables raised to the power of 1, like see how these are all linear x's? right? So that's why it's important to make sure you guys have things in linear factorization form, or especially when I asked it. But you guys can obviously just see the zeros happening here. Okay. It, uh, um, it actually reminds me of a, did I, ever, did I ever tell you about my girlfriends and, and 